candidate. You sadistic stars, I may be nothing but a piece of <laughs> You have vandalized my heart, raped my soul, and torched my conscience. You thought it was one pathetic void life you were extinguishing. Thanks to you, I die, like Jesus Christ, to inspire generations of the weak and the defenseless people. Do you know what it feels like to be spit on your face and have trash shoved down your throat? Do you know what it feels like to dig your own grave? Do you know what it feels like to have your throat smashed from ear to ear? Do you know what it feels like to be torched alive? Do you know what it feels like to be humiliated and be impaled, impaled upon on a cross and left to bleed to death for your amusement? You have never felt a single ounce of pain your whole life. Did you want to inject as much misery in our lives as you can, just because you can? You had everything you wanted. Your Mercedes wasn't enough, you brats. Your golden necklaces weren't enough, you snobs. Your trust fund wasn't enough. Your vodka and cognac weren't enough. All your debaucheries weren't enough. Those weren't enough to fulfill your hedonistic needs. You had everything. NBC says it received the package, including that video earlier today, but apparently it was mailed from a Blacksburg post office at 9.01 a.m. Monday, and that's between the time the two shootings took place. Tonight, authorities are in possession of the originals and are analyzing them. Joining us now with more on this big development, former homicide detective Rod Wheeler and criminologist Dr. James Fox. Dr. Fox, let me start with you. As a criminologist, what additional portrait does this new information paint here? Well, it really just confirms that this is a man who has a grudge, a grievance, and he wants us to know what it is. He doesn't want us to think that he's just some nut who flipped out, but that he, he has justification that this is a battle. He feels the need to strike back, get even, make a statement, and take others with him. It's very important for many mass murderers for us to understand what the message is. And uh, Rod Wheeler, this goes to the heart of also of how calculated this was, that the timeline here is that this, the video we're showing and talking about here, happened between the sets of killings here. You're exactly right, Alan. Not only uh, will it help in that regard as far as identifying the timeline, but I think this video is going to help the police investigation in a multiple ways. And the, way, the reason I say that is because if you really listen to what this kid is saying, Alan, and I think the most uh, important thing to realize here is that this kid did not become this way overnight. This is something that led up. I mean, this guy actually went through all of the changes of preparing for this event, this tragic event that happened on Monday. So I think the police are going to definitely utilize that videotape and also try to rule out whether or not there was anybody else that was involved with this young man. It's very interesting. Well, uh, go ahead. Let me point out that, that mass killers just don't snap and suddenly go berserk and just so happen to have two powerful weapons and hundreds of rounds of ammunition at the side of the bed just for such an occasion. There was no doubt that this was well planned. After all, we even knew he had to wait a whole month to buy his second weapon. This just confirms the fact that this is methodical, deliberate, planned behavior. And those people who want to just pass it off as kookiness, craziness, don't quite understand how deliberate and purposeful mass killers can actually be. Now, Rod, uh, you know, it's really, this answers, I guess, a couple of questions, too, like what happened, there was a two-hour gap, what happened in those two hours, what was he doing? And you got to right. wonder when and how he planned this. Do you know all along that he'd be doing it just this way, making the videotape, he chose a particular news outlet? Still, I guess, a lot of questions to be answered. Well, you're exactly right, Alan, but you know, the thing is, when this Cho guy woke up that morning, I, I honestly believe, and I know a lot of my colleagues in law enforcement believe the same thing, this guy woke up with the intent that this was going to be the day that he was going to go out in a blaze. Let me tell you and the viewers right now, I've seen this multiple times with mass killers. They prepare for these things. They talk to themselves exactly the way that Cho did that morning. He videotaped himself. He actually took time. He was very meticulous with the way in which he orchestrated this entire tragic event. Again, the only problem I have with this entire situation right now is that these were all warning signs, Alan, that somebody really should have picked up on. Not so much to point the finger at anybody, but someone should have really picked up on this kid a long time ago. Hey, hey Rod, it's Sean he, he, Hannity. Well, welcome back to the program here. I, I want to try and, and see what we can glean from, from a lot of what he said here when he said, you know, mention Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the Col Columbine shooters in, in Littletown, Colorado, when he compared himself to Jesus. When he blamed others, I didn't have to do, do it. I could have left. I could have fled. But I'm no longer running. If not for me, for my children, my brothers and sisters, I did it for them. 
What, what, it seems that there's some, something going on here in his mind. Do you, what do you glean from that? Well, there's a, a lot going on. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. sorry. That, that, that these guys say that they're, they're victims. This is something I have to do. Other people have been unjust. Other people are responsible. They always externalize blame. If they blame themselves for their failures and their problems, they might take their own life but not kill other people. But, what, but why, did he use the word, why did he use the word martyrs? Why did he, you know, cite those two other killers? Why did he, you know, say it's for my children, my brothers and sisters? Because well, you know, Sean, when you, Sean, I'm sorry, Sean, when you really listen to everything that Cho says in this videotape, and we've watched this videotape about 20 times today, just to find out exactly what's the message behind what he's saying, he refers to a lot of different people in this situation. He refers to people that he considers to be somewhat his God, if you will. He talked about the two young men from Columbine, yeah. all kinds of things. So this guy had a all lot right. of things going on in his mind. For, for, for everybody, and we're going to talk to the, some of the students that knew him in just a few minutes here. You know, for somebody who was supposed to be quiet, reserved, didn't say anything, although he did speak through his writings that were quite troubling, that, that got the attention of professors and, and others, you know, he sounds like somebody that was so alienated and a lot of jealousy here when he talks about people's being brats and snobs and Mercedes Benz, people that have not experienced pain in their life, the golden necklaces you wear, the trust funds you have, the cognac right. and the vodka that you drink, sure. uh, debauchery, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it, it seems like he is a kid that internalized but was seething jealousy here. Well, he internalized it, and this young man was a time bomb, Sean, so to speak, uh -huh. waiting to just simply explode, and that's what happened on Monday morning. Well, Dr. Fox, Except and that raises the question with, with everything that we know about him, and him even being institutionalized at one point. You know, the signs were missed, the, the, the ramblings, the rantings, the anger, you know, uh, the obvious alienation. He, he, kids have described to me repeatedly that knew him and met him, that they would say hello to him, and he wouldn't say anything back. Well, I'll tell you what, these signs become crystal clear in the aftermath. Sure, there were some oddities to his behavior. And sure, on Monday, his professor, after knowing there was a shooting, said, I think I know who it is. But she didn't know that it would happen on Friday. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are thousands of other people out there whose behavior is just as odd, perhaps even odder, right. and they don't pick up guns. You cannot predict this. These warning signs are only what clear you, how can we now, not, not how, previously. How, well, wait a minute, but how could we not predict it? Let's, let's be realistic here. If, okay. if a kid, if repeatedly other ch kids try and say hello, and you don't get a response, if you have one kid in one instance called the authorities because they thought he was suicidal, when he stalks two women the way he did, when he writes the, these violent, violent plays, uh, and he had, to be kicked, he had to be kicked out of a class because he was disrupting that class. It, we're not talking you know about one little this, minor this, sign here. This was, he was screeching right. and screaming out, right. I'm in trouble. But do you know how common this is on college campuses? The, the you know, kids don't, if you say hi to a kid and he doesn't say hi back, that's common? Absolutely. I'm not saying that, that, that 5% of the students act that way, but I will bet you that almost every campus has a couple of real misfits who act like that. They're very dark, they perhaps wear strange clothes, and they talk in, 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 uh, in violent terms. And it, and if we're gonna, and the point is, it's needles, but, but wait, needles but, and haystacks. But, but wait, you can't, I, but, Rod, wait, this I'm is, not quite buying this here because he was yeah. stalking women. He had to be institutionalized. The police thought he was a danger. People called in, thought he was suicidal. The, the, he had to get kicked out of a class. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, but That's it seems severe. that we have a series of missed opportunities here. Sean, and I'm not, exactly casting, I'm not casting blame. I don't want to be right, misunderstood right. here. I, I right, blame but we, him. But right. You know, the thing is, we have to learn from this experience, Sean. But let me just quickly tell you this. I just a few minutes ago, what do we do? I, just, I just spoke with a student who remembers this guy from high school. Let me tell you, this guy was acting strange back in high school. So there was a lot of warning signs. So you can't tell me tonight that we should not, as professionals, have not been able to right, identify guys, right that there. this gonna, guy was a time But what bomb. are you going to do? You cannot reliably predict, based on strange behavior, that there's going to be mass murder. That's a very good point. So We're going to pick it up go? in just a moment, guys. We're going to take a break. More focus on these frightening images and we will continue to speak with those that did know Cho and the warning signs of a killer. Why were they missed? All to come on Hannity and Combs.